No, I haven't seen him. Equation constant, which is I think k is equal to the rate by uh, whatever two letters. So this will be q and r squared. And then to work on the other, you just have to rearrange the equation just like math. It's not math. That is the so rate. I don't tell about that because I see that in a class. So that is the that that. So yeah, we know what the problem was. Okay, so I'm going to do two two with that equilibrium question. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to work a little faster in the morning here. But he's doing nothing as yet though. You doing nothing as yet? Jordan, Jordan, please. Imagine, MOB. All right, cool, MOB. All right, those nice. Environmental, too freaking low. Uh, how much fucking time I'll tell you exam today? You ready to put me off? Yeah, me was no no freaking pass the point till I actually learn what I doing, boy. Um, and we he call my name for? Mm -hmm. I was yeah, they they volume was off. All right, so I was saying I'm going to work two class papers on redox equilibrium and then move on. So I'll be moving a little quick this morning. For the person that picked, that typed a while ago, remember they asked it for a half cell and not just standard electrode potential. They asked it for the half cell.
Uh, good morning. Uh, sir, from what time class? Please repeat. Uh, from what time I'm class start? Just a while ago. Oh, so I'm going to miss enough then. Yeah. Miss. No, no. Just this is the first thing. Right, right, right. Um, sir, anything I should have mentioned, a definition under standard conditions. Oh, you mean for uh, number one? Yes, sir. Generally, when we're using it, it would be under standard conditions. But let me add it the same way. Okay, so no problem. Sarah, does it matter if um, you draw the electrodes the same size or you have to show the difference, the different sizes? Please repeat that. If we draw the way? Does it matter if you draw the, the electrodes the same size, sir? Because you usually draw one of them smaller, but I don't need a motion. No, it doesn't matter. Only in C -sec, only when we're doing this C sec, we would draw one bigger. But if you put the voltmeter there, then it wouldn't matter. Okay, sir. Okay. All right. So in, in this one, so remember now, all right, it's hydrogen ions, all right, concentration. One mole per dm cube. The temperature must be two Kelvin. These should also be at one moles per dm cube. You see, because you're using two ions, as in Fe2 plus Fe3 plus, as I was explaining yesterday, if that happens, you are going to use platinum electrode again. So that's platinum. This is platinum as well. Sir, this is a repeat question. I'm just continuing from, from last night and just doing the question in complete.
I right, so just take a picture of, for this, of this from a quick bit. All right, I'm going to move on. Oh, we also did not label this salt bridge. So just remember to label your salt bridge. The, the iron, it has a positive electrode potential. So we know it would be the positive one and the hydrogen. We're going to label it negative. All right, let me see this quickly. So I put the so hydrogen. This, so this, it's, okay. Okay. it's okay. It's okay. No, man. Hmm? As long as you label it, you know. Yeah, man, it doesn't matter. If you want to put it on the left. I should actually have put it on the left. So I put it on the left. Yes, that's okay. All right, so let's move again. All right, for this, I know that you can use it to predict the feasibility of, of certain reactions, as you will see a little later, predict. So basically we use them to know if a reaction can occur between two species. So, um, okay. I think you can also predict it. Use the use electro potential to know um which side is the negative electrode and which side is a positive electrode. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, and that is how you would know if it is feasible. But uh, you know, uh, right. you know, when I read now on textbook and like, mm -hmm. they now mention that. Let me say oxidation occurs at the anode, right? Oxidation at the anode. Yeah. Right. What did I say? What did I mention? Said the anode is um the positive, positive electrode. Oh, yeah, right. I'm gonna tell you it switched from C sick. So uh, so now the anode is negative. So what kind of foolish this stuff? Hmm. Or next. So we are living a lie. We were living a lie. That's what you said. No, not really, but yeah. so because if anode is where oxidation occurs, right? That mm -hmm. means that that is where the electrons are coming from and should be negative. Yeah. So assign the correct what are you, what are you saying here? Assign the correct um let's say for the same which one is the negative say, electrode, which one is the positive electrode. Right. I send the current terminals. I want to say in electrodes. Yeah. 
Okay, we're going to um, energetics right now after this. All right. Go on, don't this on the rates and then we'll see if we can touch any. All right, so that was that. All right, then it says consider the half cell. So this is part B now. Not off cell. Melit. So you think they're going to um, ask about batteries and such? No, I don't think so. Because based on three questions, well, three topics, I feel like it will just ask about like this part here that I'm going to do now. I feel like it's something like it. So remember this over here is the left hand side. So this is copper metal. So right, remember with the iron Fe2 plus Aqueous and Fe3 plus, sorry. So Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus. If you notice this half cell, it contains two, uh, two ions in solution. But this one, it's solid and aqueous. So it means that you have a piece of copper in solution, in solution with copper ions. So what it means is that copper metal is the electrode. Right? Need space to draw this hot bridge. All right, let me just erase this. And then in this container, you have silver ions in contact with silver. So this is silver, this is copper. So we know that copper as the it, it is more reactive than silver. So copper is going to be your negative electrode, and silver is going to be the positive electrode. So the movement of electron it is from copper over to silver. So and all you know this is because. Um, based on, yeah, it's been up well, if you know your electrochemical series, but apart from that, they are going to give you the E naught. So, the E naught value for copper is 0 0.34. Let me put that on the board. So, the E naught for copper is positive 0 0.34, and for silver. It is positive 0 0.8, all right? So when you are comparing the one that is closer to zero, if, if, if both of them are positive, it's the one that is closer to zero, all right? So copper, it has a lower number than silver. 
this means copper has a greater tendency to give up electrons than silver. Right. So if you remember the electrochemical series, you can just arrange copper and then silver. But if you don't, compare the, the E naught. The higher the E naught, the, the less reactive it is, basic, basically. All right. So th that is how you would draw it. All right. Actually, they did not ask us to draw it. But if they did, that is what you would do. Oh, this is where we had reached last night. So they asked us now to write the equation for the reaction occurring between copper and silver. So let us do, do that now. So you remember the yeah. um Nemo me coming after the bomb that again? Oh yeah, right. tell me now. Um so yeah, it's a no problem, no, no PR basically. Where no so it's a no well on no problem. Yeah. Capitalize the NO and the PR. Capitalize N and P. Yeah, yeah, B capital N capital N or capital PR. I'm not hearing you clearly. Let's set up again. Capitalize the, the the N and the O and the P and the R. The first. Oh, hold on. All right. So capitalize N O P R. That is that is what I said. Um. Um. Yeah. Yeah. As the girl has said, um, the most negative is oxidized. So NO, negative oxidized, most negative. Oh. And PR is the most positive is reduced. Oh. And you can look at peanut value them and literal assign which one are being reduced as when I be oxidized based on this. So negative is for oxidation. The most negative. So I remember I say you can get the them positive. Right, I'm so going yeah, I'm going to put that as well. So NOPR, negative oxidation, positive is reduction. I also have um, an ox red cat. By the, way, I'm, by the way, this is not me. I don't mean look up this. That's where I get it from. Well, let's just use the NOPR. So if you look at, let us just move quickly. So silver was... Positive 0 0.8, that is silver, copper, 0 0.34. Right. So I said more positive is reduction, which means copper is more positive. So that is why it is at the cathode, All right. being the positive one. So if you want to use that one and remember it. All right, so let's go again. I'm going to clear the board. So look, what this is saying, right? In order to write the equation, if this is the anode, what happens at the anode? Oxidation or reduction? Oxidation. I have another name for this thing. Anox red cat. Anox red cat. Yeah. So write that one there. All right, so at the anode, what would happen to copper? It would form Cu2 plus and give up 2E. And reduction, it would form, sorry, at the, the
internet went a while ago. I'm not sure what happened. All right, so let's start again. The internet had, had went. So we had copper being oxidized to Cu2 plus. Then we have silver. Form Ag. So the final equation, it would be copper plus silver to give So this is the equation. All right, to calculate the standard cell potential, Just say E naught of the right minus E naught of the left. So since as sil since silver is on the right, so it is the E naught of silver minus the E naught for copper. So it could be the E naught of the cathode minus E naught of the anode. Right. Yeah. I same thing. So if you want to say E naught of the cathode minus E naught of the anode, sure. And silver I is have an, 80. I have another way to say we can say E naught reduced minus E naught oxidized. Right. I same thing because oxidation occurs at the anode, reduction at the cathode. All right, so positive 80 minus positive 0 0.34, and we would get 0 0.46. All right. Yes, so both of our unit. And a 0 0.8, sir. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Excuse me, so will we have to um, change the equations are wrong or they will give us um, a sheet with the equations at the anode and at the cathode? Please repeat that. If they, if? If we will get, um, if we will get a paper, if we have to switch the equation are wrong or if they'll give us a paper with the reaction between the anode and the cathode and they'll give us the number so we could just plug it into the formula. They can just give you the two of equations and their E naught. So there's an next question I'm going to work. So okay, no you, will, yeah, you will get to see it, All right? Then it says, assess the feasibility of the reaction.
All right, so they're asking if the reaction is feasible to know that you look at what you have. So the reaction is between copper, metal, and Ag plus. So you look at the two E nodes, right? So if it was that they put silver, so if it was a case where you have silver, metal, and copper iron, this reaction is not feasible. Because based on the E naught value, silver is not better at giving up electrons than copper. All right, so you use the E naught values. So this half cell here, it would indicate that silver is the anode and is going to donate electrons. So this is not feasible. This one is. So, um, yeah, I know you could also mention the feasibility too. Is that the value, the cell potential is positive? You see that one textbook. So, I want the positivity is feasible. Uh, let's make compare them. And this here, some say it's less positive than silver. Sir, so the higher value are more likely oxidizing. The more positive it is, the less the less likely it is to give up an electron. All right, sir. 
Yeah. So, so the reason why this reaction is feasible is feasible between copper, solid copper, and Ag plus. Copper is better at giving up electrons. All right. Let me just do this quickly. So, what you would have read, you would have Ag plus plus electron. In, so this is the half cell for silver. And then for copper, it would be this. All right. This one, this equilibrium here, it is to the left. I mean, to the right. So this is to the right. This one is to the left. So what it means that is copper is better at forming copper ions by giving up electrons and silver is better at gaining electrons to form silver. So when you set up this cell, it should be copper metal with silver ions because copper is better at being oxidized and silver is better at being at being reduced that is why it has the higher value all right but we can't spend too long on this we, we have to move on all right just remember the higher the value the more likely it is to be to be reduced. As or right, you can so just go up on the PR and say more positive um, reduce. Right. So whichever one you want to use. So yeah, there is more than one way. So just pick one that you understand and use it. So there is more than one way of viewing it. So just pick the one you, you understand and use it. So this now says affect, assess the effect of increase, assess the effect of increase in, in the concentration of silver ions. With increasing silver ions with let's look back at it. So silver ion. Silver was where again? Silver ion with the electron with a G. Increasing the concentration of the silver ion, it would go to the right. Yes, it's, it's a little let chat layers. Let 
me do it quickly and show you. Right, if you increase the concentration of the silver ions, it would be taking up more of the electrons, right? And shift the equilibrium to the right. So the cell potential, it would decrease, right? Because I'm moving a bit faster, I won't be able to go into any further details, all right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Just rewrite quickly. I'm going to, to do our next one. Give me a second. Just a second. All right, hold on. Let me write it and then, and then do that. All right. Just take a picture. I'm going to clear all of the screen. All right. I'm going to clear the screen now. This is the next class paper. I'm not sure of the year, probably about 2013, Thank you. All right, so they give us this data, right? And ask us to construct the, the, the cell diagram. So again, when you look at these two in a value, you can see that copper is more, is more reactive than silver. Also again, you can use the electrochemical series. We know that copper is above silver. So whichever is more reactive, that is your anode. So 
For that reason, we are going to make copper the anode. All right, so that would be it. I'm going there next. All right, so we know that again, copper is being oxidized and silver is being reduced. So, so copper being oxidized. Is it beat? Well, no. Copper is being oxidized. It's getting a bit noisy outside. Text the question. All right. Just repeat it quickly. If what were you I just want to know copper? is copper being oxidized, right? Yes, right. yeah, man, yeah, man. Right. So, so whatever is at the anode is being oxidized, and this is being and this is reduced. All right, and then it, it asks some similar question from 2018. All right, this guy is a All right, so yeah, we're going to stop there for this one, and we'll do some rates, all right, because time is going. All right, so far. For rates of reaction, I'm taking it from 2018 again. So just take a picture, I'm going to clear the screen. Okay. 
share the screen. All right, what are some factors that affect read? Your concentration, temperature. 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 Right, so the first thing they ask, and say, stay two factors that affect read. Affect read. So we know concentration, temperature, and you can list them because I know you know them. All right. For sure. Particle size and pressure. All right. So the next question, we get a table. I am not going to do all of the table. All right, so part B, we have this reaction, hydrogen with two NO. Two H2O plus N2, which is a gas. So from the graph, what graph? Not graph, from the data. All right, so to calculate the order of the of the reaction, you can look at the table and just figure it out. But in the interest of time, I'm going to show you how to calculate it because they can also miss one of them. All right, so you can actually calculate the order of the reaction. So I'm going to start with hydrogen and I'm going to use this formula.
Yeah, class in no? All right, so what you're going to do now, right? You're going to look for two experiments in which you change the concentration of hydrogen while keeping NO constant, all right? So if you look at experiments one and two, you change the concentration of H2 while keeping the concentration constant, all right? So for experiments one and two, the rate two is the bigger one. So it would be six, six times 10 to the minus three divided by three times 10 to the minus three. You are going to get two. And then for hydrogen, it would be two times, hold on, up here, two times 10 to the minus three. So, um, yeah, you have to decipher the unit then. Please repeat. You have to use the unit then. The units for rate, I mean. I mean. Oh, what about it? If I'm going to show you how to, how to work it out? Yeah. Yeah, man. All right. So, bum, bum, bum. Right. So, this will give you two. To the M. All right. When you get to this part, it's a, it's a log. All right. So all you will say, right? All right. So two is equal to two to the M. M is the order of the reaction. This is a bit much. I'm not sure how they did it because I didn't do logs. But what you will say is log two is equal to M log two. So all you are going to do, right? Divide rate two by Read one, you'll get the answer. The second concentration over the first one. All right. When you get the answer, two is raised to the power of m. They use log to solve it. Right. So all you all you do is put log in front of this two. So I'm going to get log two is equal to m log two. So to get m, it's equal to log two over log two, you're going to get one. So sir, do you necessarily have to find a log? Because like normally what I do is just like divide the two and then I would get a one. Yeah, if you divide two by two, you are still going to get the one. But as in two raised to the power of m to make m the subject, they use log. But you don't have to cause you will still, if you look at it, if you divide two by two, you will still end up with the one. But that's the much the end of it. All right. Well, I think one other way we could look on is that the two over final side when I have no power is actually two to the one, just equal to two to the m. Since m equal two to the one must be mm -hmm. equal to two to the m. M must be one. All right. So if you if you know if you do that, it can be. But it will work out as the other female had said. Once he, it will work out to be the one, regardless, all right? Because when you reach here, if you want to say M is equal to two over two, we will still end up with it being a one, all right? So, so depending on the table you get, the numbers might seem off. I don't know how to compare them, all right? So, all right, what is the order of this reaction? First order, second order, what is it? First. And, right. Once it's one, it's first order. All right, so with 
respect to hydrogen, it is first order reaction. Now, if you know how to interpret the table, you double the concentration of H2 and the rate also double so it is first order. All right, so if you are able to just look at it, but some students have difficulty, so I'm showing you how to just calculate it, all right? And they can ask you to calculate it. They did not in this case, but I'm just showing you so you can know how to do it. All right, so if yeah. we're doing N, yeah, quickly. One question, if it was zero order, you wouldn't get no change in the rate. That is correct. All right. Yeah, man. All right, let us so for NO. Tell me two experiments. Somebody quickly tell me two experiments I can use for NO. 30 and 4. 3 and 4. No, we can't use 3 and 4. Sir, we'll have to use 1 and 4, sir. Wait, no. Sir, yeah. but no. Constant. Constant for the hydrogen. Yes, sir. All right. So, repeat the answer. Did you say two and three? I've not seen anyone that's any concentration that's remaining constant for the hydrogen. Oh, all right. Oh, yes. That, that, that's true. Let me add the next one. Sorry. So, that's correct. All right. So, question number five. All right. Six times 10 to the minus three and uh, two times 10 to the minus three, right? And then the rate is two times 10 to the right. So we can use experiment four, four and, and five. five. So remember, when you are selecting your experiment for a particular reactant. So now we want to know the order of reaction with respect to NO. So you have to look at two experiments that you change the concentration of NO, right? So you could have used three, yes? Sorry, but I, I don't think I really understand how you get the two times 10 to the three for the rate. Where? Um, experiment five. This? Experiment five. Just added, sir. Over here? Experiment five, we just add. Yes, sir. Oh, no, oh, no, man. So the actual past paper, it, it gave us six experiments, but I just put four on the board. Oh. Okay. Yeah, but, right. So I realized that for NO, we couldn't use any of the four. So I added a fifth one. Yes, yeah, so it's actually six. Right. Okay, so thank so you. Was, yeah, so it was six. So, all right, so just uh, six times 10 to the minus three. And this was three times 10 to the minus three. And this was 4.5 times 10 to the minus three. All right. So as I was saying, we want to know the order of reaction with respect to NO. So you look for two experiments in which you change the concentration of NO. So we could use experiment three and four. However, for those two experiments, the concentration of H2 has to be constant. So for that reason, we cannot use experiments three and four because these two are not constant. If you look at experiment four and five, you change the concentration of NO while keeping the concentration of hydrogen constant. You could also use experiments four and six. All right, so for NO, four and five are, we could use, where is it? Four and six are five and six. Because in five and six, you change it, this kept constant. For four and five, you change this while keeping H2 constant. Right, it is going to be second order. All right, so just like before, it's rate two over rate one, all right? 
So I'm going to erase this. All right, so which experiment you want to use? All right, let's use four and five. All right. So we're going to do this using, using experiment four and five. So two over one, so rate is two times 10 to the minus three divided by one times 10 to the minus three, that is equal to two times 10 to the minus three divided by 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus three. So this is going to be equal to two. This will give you four, all right? So the other is equal to four over two, which is equal to two. If you want to do the log way, you would get two is equal to four to the M, all right? So M would be equal to log four over log two, and you would still end up with two, all right? So you see, it's pretty straightforward how to get the order of the reaction. All right, so just take a picture of that so I can clear the board. Oh, I don't need the table anymore. So I'm going to erase the table. Wait, I actually might need the table. So let, let it stay. All right, I'm going to erase now. Hmm? Yeah, but Miss, me, yeah. All right. So it says right, the rate law for the for the reaction. Rate law is the same as in the rate equation. Remember to put them in square brackets. So rate is equal to K times the concentration of hydrogen. It is first order, but so because it's first order, you don't need to put the one there, all right? So rate is equal to K times hydrogen. NO squared. So remember you put the order of the reaction at the top. Because it's first order, you do not need to put the one up there. So that's the rate law, the same as the rate equation. So suppose I'm asked them to just give like a definition of rate law. That rate, I mean rate of reaction. Oh, the definition. Uh, give me, I'm going to write it after. Yeah, they can ask you for a definition. I calculate the value of the rate constant. So for this, I just use like one of the experiments, then, right? That is correct. So you use any experiment and your answer should be the same. If you want to know if it is correct, you can do two experiments. If you don't get the same answer for K, you did something wrong.
All right, so you can give us an experiment one. I'm going to, I'm going to transpose this equation for k. So k is the rate divided by H2 times NO squared. All right, let me see which experiment I have used. All right, so rate is for experiment one, it is three times 10 to the minus three divided by hydrogen concentration, that's one times 10 to the minus three times six, six times 10 to the minus three squared. going to continue it here. Sir, if they yes. ask the in the other direction, they can use that same formula, right? Is it beat? If they ask you to find the order of the, reac uh, of the reaction, right? You can use yeah. the same formula? Yeah, man, that is correct. Oh, so the answer, that's three times 10 to the minus three divided by, and I got 3.6 times 10 to the minus eight. And that would be equal to 8.33 times 10 to the four. All right, so that is K. Let us calculate the the unit for K. All right, let me see this. Normally, they give you the formula if they ask you to find the rate. No, they can just give you the experiment and ask you to, to write the rate equation and then ask you to find K. So they it can come both ways. So I could give you an example of that way. I'm going to do one next question after this. All right. All right. So the units now. All right. So in the table, they will give you the unit for it, but generally it is moles per dm cube per second. All right. So I am calculating the units now. All right, so this is it for it. All right, so mole divided by the dm cube times one over s. So moles per dm cube per second, this is it. And remember, we are dividing it now by the concentration of H. Remember, concentration is mole per dm cube, all right? So this is for hydrogen and we're tangent it by NO. So again, concentration is mole per dm cube. But remember you squared, you squared NO, so it is moles per dm cube times moles per dm cube, all right? So this is for H2. So this is basically like H2 times NO squared, all right? So what I'm going to do now is flip 
everything on this side of the division sign. So I'm switching it to multiply and then I'm flipping everything. DM cube over mole. I'm just going through all of these details for explanation purposes. You don't have to do all of this. You can take some shortcuts. All right, so DM cube over mole. All right. All right, so DM cube cancels, DM cube, mole cancel, mole. So you are left with DM6, mole negative two, because it is below the division sign, right? So the mole negative two here is because it is a denominator. S is also a denominator. So this is your unit, dm6 mole to the minus two, S to the minus one. All right. So that is how it would be done. You add them. Don't times it. Yeah. All right. So that is how you would calculate the rate. All right. Let me see what else is there. To so just how you would measure it. All right. No. All right. Let's go to the next question. Where is it? Give me a second. All right, I'm going to clear the screen, so just take a picture if you need to. Don't get the, the units part. Right, I'm going to do a next example before I close, but I'm going to work on the next question. All right, so I'm going to clear the screen now. Right. I, I'm not sure, again, this, I'm not sure which year, but it's after 2010. All right. So quickly again, and right. experiment one, two, three, four. Um, remember me to tell you something about iron, iron, hemoglobin, and oxygen for transition metal before I end. Okay. So just, yeah.
All right, so the first question, use the information from the table. All right, so where is it? Iron hemoglobin and oxygen versus carbon monoxide. So I'm going to explain carbon monoxide poisoning basically. All right, so let's go now. So we need the rate of reaction in terms of S2O8. So quickly, which two experiments I can use to calculate the order for S2O8? Two and three. Two and three, yes, that can use. And one and two as well. So this is the other four. S2. But, sir, oh, one and two. One and two. Oh, sir, one no, and no, no, no. One and two would be for iodide. Yes, sorry about that. Right. So, ray two. Right. So, let them know using experiment. Two and three. All right, so rate two over rate one is two o eight over is two o eight. So experiment three is right, we use the bigger number at the top. So we're going to use zero point one five divided by zero point zero seven five. And that would be equal to, sorry, wrong thing. So 5.6 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 2.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to 0 0.15 divided by 0 0.075. This would be two is equal to, all right? So the other is equal to two over two, which is one. So it is first order. All right, which and for I2, no, no, not I2, for I minus. Experiment one and two for I minus all right. So it would be 5.6 times 10 to the minus 4 over 1.4 times 10. To, no. And this is equal to. 0 0.50 divided by 0 0.25. This would give a two, 14, let me see how much that gives, 14, 28, 42, 56, four. So order four over two, which is equal to two. So it is second order with respect to I, minus and first order with respect to S208. So the over so this is the order with respect to that. So the overall order overall order is 
is equal to one plus two, which is equal to three. So that is the overall order of the reaction. So, Again, when you're calculating K, you can pick any experiment. So I'm going to pick experiment one. So the rate for experiment one is 1 1.4 times 10 to the minus five divided by 0 0.15 times 0 0.25 squared. All right, to prove at this point, so this is using experiment one. I want somebody to just calculate experiment two for me. So using experiment two, it would have been 5.6 times 10 to the minus five divided by 0 0.15 times 0 0.50 squared. So somebody just calculate this one for me. So we get for this one, we get 1.49. Experiment two is also 1.49. You get this, you get 1.49 as well? For yes, this one, yes, right, sir. all right. So for each experiment, it, it, it doesn't matter which experiment, the value of K should be the same. So that is why I said, you can just plug it in for a second one quickly to just, to, just to be sure that your answer is correct and you don't make any mistake, just do it for two experiments. Once it is the same, then you can be sure that your answer is correct.
All right, so remember for rate, rate is equal to K S208 times I minus squared. So I'm just going to plug these values into the equation. So we know that K is 1.49 times 10 to the minus three times 0 0.13 times 0 0.32 squared. All right, somebody can just work this quickly. One point nine eight times ten to the minus five are one point nine eight times ten to the minus five. Again, the unit for farads it will always work out to be moles per dm cube per second. Right? So this is a typical rates question where they give you the data in the table and ask you for the order of reaction with respect to each reactant, and then ask you to calculate the rate, or k, or both of them. Yeah. All right, so take a picture. I want, let us do one more on rate where you do temperature and catalyst. And I'll show you this thing about transition and something with intermolecular force. So we now didn't know um, energetics. Send me any, I will, I will have to, I have to leave shortly, but I'm going to just send the work note, not a video. I probably have to just try and do a work note of one and um, post it. I'm going to work up our neighbor one and post. Yeah. All right, I'm going to clear the screen now. The rates graph, right? Not the rates graph, the factors affecting rates. Remember the graph, so I'm just doing, I'm just doing temperature and catalyst. Just doing temperature. Give me a second. Right. So we are to use the diagram to, to show the effect of temperature. So this is the Boltzmann distribution curve. So let us say this point on your graph represents the activation energy. So you draw a line from the activation energy. So this graph, if they ask you to explain the effect of temperature and rates using the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve, this is what you will draw. This is the initial temperature and T2 is when you increase the temperature. Remember, under the area under the graph represent the amount of molecules. All right. So remember, a reaction will not occur unless the molecules of the activation energy, right? So when the temperature, let us say T1 was 30 and T2 is 45. Clearly, when the temperature was shifted from 30 to 45, this area here 
represents the amount of particles that are able to react, all right? So the blue area was the initial amount of particles that had the activation energy at 30. When you increase the temperature to 40, more molecules now of the activation energy, all right? So we know that as temperature increase, rate of reaction increases. So that is the relationship between temperature and rate if they ask, if they ask you to state it. So as temperature increase, rate of reaction increase. If they ask you to explain it, the energy energy of the molecules increases. The kinetic energy, once that happens, I'm just putting it in kind format. Energy of the, of the molecules increase, collision increases. Once collision increase, rate is going to increase. For catalyst, So again, let us say the activation energy without the catalyst is here. Only the molecules in this area will actually react. All right, so this area without catalyst. Remember the catalyst is going to lower the activation energy. So let us say now here, is the activation energy with the catalyst. All right, so you draw a line going up. All right, so in this area, with, with catalyst, all right? So you can see that when you add the catalyst, more molecules are able to, to react, all right? So the presence of a catalyst increases the rate of reaction. All right, explanation. Catalyst provides
right? So that's that. All right, I have to stop there for it. I have a qualitative analysis question. I need to work with you. All right. So I'm going to do a little qualitative analysis quickly. Where was it? Let me see Give me a second. Yes, I found it. All right, so let me clear this. Remember, for the study the colors of the ions for the flame test. Study the water. The, the, study the colors for the flame test. All right, give me a second. All right, just a second. All right, so we have a table here. M is a mixed, this is from 2013. Identification of anions and cations. All right, so at eight cell to M and warm observation. You have class in here. All right, so they gave us this test and the no observation is given, but the inference 
SO to evolve. All right. That means you need to know about SO2. So SO2, it will, did we, anybody remember what is this hint for SO2? Choking, choking acidity. Right, right. No, even though they don't mention it in the test, to confirm SO2, you are going to use So if you want to confirm SO2, you are going to use potassium per manganate solution or potassium dichromate. All right. So since as they confirm it, it means that one of these would have to be used. So for my second observation, when the gas is produced, we would bubble it in KMnO4. So you could put KMnO4 is decolorized. Or dichro may change from orange to green. All right. So that is all. You are sure that it would happen. So um, it is SO2 for sure. The overall charge on the magnet ion is negative one, right? Minus. Yeah, but so since K is on it, it cancel. Yeah. And the overall yeah. charge on the Cr2O4, that is. Two minus. Two minus. Two so minus. When the manganese is um, uh, reduced or oxidized. Uh, it is uh, reduced. So plus, so the MnO4, yeah. it would it would go from this to this. So, so the potassium, I, it is it is reduced. It is plus seven in this in this ion. Uh oh. Yeah. And chromium, it moved from plus six to plus three. All right, so that's that. Next, the, the next test in the table now. All right, so the next thing that they said, shake M with water, then filter. So basically, you are adding add K two Cr two O seven. It as is and acidified CR two O seven two minus so for this so this observation would come down here. All right, so I guess up here we, would, we would, could put that I guess is produced with a choking acidic smell, since as they follow up with the confirmation here. All right, so I'm going to bring these. So bring these down here. No, but you would still have to confirm it. So make it stay. 
All right, so this goes from orange. So what I'm going to do is switch this one. So a guess was evolved and we had that it has a choking acidic smell. And for inference, they have this sulfide ion is present. All right, so even though they split it up, right? Let me just explain what happened. What you really want to know is if sulfide ion is in the solution. The, how we confirm sulfide is the presence of SO2, all right? So if SO2 is evolved, it confirms sulfide is present. And I will say, as I was saying, you use the dichromate or the, or the potassium per manganate to confirm it, all right? So once you use it and your sulfide is present, it means that you would have seen an orange to green color change. So, um, sir. But say so you have yes. SO2, but so you have SO3, 2 minus. With SO4, you would have gotten a precipitate. So, yeah, so with SO4, you would use, when it comes to SO4, which one am I? SO4. Hmm? SO4, we would have reacted, we normally use barium nitrate or barium chloride, all right? And you would have gotten a precipitate of barium sulfate, all right? But the sulfite, it would not give you a precipitate. That is why we would need to confirm it by allowing a gas to be evolved. So we do this type of reaction to produce the gas to confirm sulfite. So right? two iron, the same iron. But you have SO2 and you have SO3, so maybe I wonder. For this, you must know the difference between sulfide and sulfate. Okay, so these are the two ions for this section that you must know. They have sulfide SO2, and sulfate. SO2, hmm? they have SO2 SO3, SO4. No man, this is sulfur. That this is sulfur dioxide, you know. I guess this is the ion sulfide, SO three two. So this is the gas. This is sulfide ion. This is sulfate ion. You understand, or maybe I'm not. I am not yes, understanding. Understand. You. understand. All right. All right, so the next one it, it's with lead. So let me just do that quickly. The sir for the for the sulfide, yeah. the SO, SO3, I use um yeah, I get a choking smell. Yeah, like the choking acidic, yes, sir. The, the sulfide. Up here. Just when you just when you get the gas, not so with the iron. The dioxide, I'm um, the sulfide, right. the sulfide to get the orange green double decolorize the thing. Decolorize so the yeah, so if you use put if, if this if you use MNO if here, if it was MNO4 minus, then your observation would be purple to colorless. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So and, for the, and the SO4, what 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 the same change you do? No, the sulfate you would get a white precipitate. So we would not need all of this for the sulfate, all right? Because once you add barium chloride to the solution, you are going to get a white precipitate and you know it is sulfate, all right? So the sulfate is easy. 
it is the sulfide that requires more steps. All right. All right, so basically what they did next was to add potassium iodide in the next step. When they add potassium iodide, lead is, they said that lead is present. All right. Once lead is present, you will get a yellow precipitate as your observation. All right. So anything you see potassium iodide, you are using it to test for lead. So if you use Ki and they told you that you got a yellow precipitate, you should know that Pb2 plus is present. All right. So Ki is used to test for lead. All right. All right, quickly, I'm going to clear the screen and tell you something else quickly. So we are wrapping in 15 minutes. So let's take a picture. I'm going to clear the screen. All right. So quickly, halide ions, you are going to use Ag, NO3, followed by ammonia. All right. Chloride. You get a white precipitate, it dissolves in dilute ammonia. All right, bromide iron, you get a cream. So, all you have to do is, sir, you know, I'm close. Yeah. So the bromide ion, they get a cream precipitate. It dissolves in concentrated ammonia. All right. And iodide yellow. It, it, it is insoluble. All right, so it will not dissolve. So just remember those for your halogens, all right? I'm just going to quickly, oh, in terms of half equation, they can ask you for half equations. What is going to happen is that these ions, these ions are going, the, the halide ions are going to combine with the silver ion to give you a silver chloride. Sorry, yeah, all right, which is a precipitate. So for these observations, if they ask you for the ionic equation, this is what you do. The halide ion with the silver ion, all right? If they give you lead nitrate instead of silver nitrate, it is the same thing. These halide ions will combine with the lead ion. All right, you will get PbCl2, which is a solid, all right? I'm going to erase the left hand side. Okay. Yeah. All right. Quickly again. And sir, oh, you have um, PB2 yeah. plus plus 2 BR and get um, PB chloride. Come on, move fast. <laughs> Sorry. Come yeah, on. Thanks. So it would be PB, BR2. Yeah, so chlorine is, is white, Cl minus is white, BR minus is cream, iodine yeah. is yellow. No, right. reactor is ammonia. They get um, chlorine the, have a dissolve in a dilute, in, BR right. have a dissolve in a concentrated, and mm -hmm. iodine is insoluble. Insoluble, right. In ammonia. Yeah. Carbonate ion, and good thing I can tell, right? For this one, they will confirm it with a guess. All right. So Carbon when you're testing for right, so you confirm it with CO2. So for the carbonate, confirm with CO2. How you know it's CO2? Once you see 
any observation that says turns lime water, which is calcium hydroxide. Once it says it turns lime water milky, just know it is CO2. That is the only gas that is going to react with the lime water and turn it milky. It don't have to say milky, it can simply say a white precipitate. But once you see lime water, that is for CO2, all right? Lime water is for CO2. The last thing on this I, I'm going to tell you, and this when it comes is about five marks so hopefully it's the ones you remember all right you use once you use sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide you are testing for cations all right so fe2 plus green precipitate green ppt which other one? Copper, light blue, TPT. Which other color you must know? Fe3 plus would be Fe3 plus, rusty brown. All right. All right. For white precipitate, now, right? This is where it comes into play. But for white precipitate, it can be aluminium, zinc, magnesium, calcium. What am I leaving out? Lead. I think I have it. The yeah, calcium, aluminium, magnesium, lead. No. If the precipitate, please repeat. There's CR2 plus. CR, chromium is a transition metal. It would have a color. Check the color. Oh. Oh, barium is a white one as well. All right. That's supposed to have a color. Sir, I thought barium yes. does. I thought barium does. Sir, I thought barium doesn't give um um a precipitate. Barium hydroxide. Yes, sir. D double check it for me. All right. All right. So just double check barium. I'm certain of these ones though. All right. So white precipitate, any of these. That is when you add it drop wise. All right. When you add sodium hydroxide in excess, if it dissolves in excess, you have zinc. Aluminium or lead. All right. So with sodium hydroxide, when you add a few drops, if once you get a precipitate, any of these ions are present. When you add it in excess, if it dissolves, it is zinc, aluminium, or lead. All right. Just remember that once it dissolves in excess, it is zinc, aluminium, or lead. All right. So continuing on now, you, you would move from sodium hydroxide and you would use ammonia, all right? If you get the white precipitate, just know that calcium, calcium does not form precipitate with NH3, all right? If you get so the observation is the same for for ammonia, just like sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to put the exception. Dissolve in excess. So continuing from zinc, aluminium, and lead, if it dissolve in excess, then you have zinc ion. All right. So if it dissolves in excess, it is zinc. That means if it does not dissolve, it is either lead or aluminium. 
and to differentiate between lead and aluminium, we do a confirmator test. We do a confirmator test for lead, all right? And so for that, we use KI, all right? So once you see KI, we are use, we are testing for lead. I know this part is a bit rushed, but hopefully some of it sticks, all right? All right, let's just take a picture of the board. For iron, right? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin, it contains Fe2 plus. All right, so I'm going to clear the board now. Take a picture. All right. That is correct, Mardian. Fe2 plus has higher affinity for CO than O2. All right, so just in case they ask you something about the hemoglobin, right? Just know that it has a higher affinity for carbon monoxide. So it will not bind to oxygen in the presence of CO, all right? All right, and the next thing, a coordination, coordination, number of four that is tetraedral tetraedral if the coordination number is six it is octahedral and if it is two it is linear Right, I'm going to erase the top part of the board. When we did intermolecular forces, right? I told you that alcohol. So let me do a quick thing. So this is alcohol, right? So we know it as hydrogen. Bonding. So the OH, this is slightly negative, this is slightly positive, so it can do hydrogen bonding. All right. In terms of solubility, so they can give you a table where you have a polar solvent and a non-polar solvent. All right, alcohol, it will be soluble. It will be soluble in the polar solvent as well as in the non-polar solvent. Reason being, 
this part of the compound, it can interact. So th this part is non-polar, right? So you have Van der Waals forces. Just remember, like dissolve, like dissolve, like. In other words, polar with polar. So this is polar, it will dissolve in the polar solvent, but a portion of it is non-polar. So that part can interact with the solvent. That is why alcohol and oil, oil will dissolve in alcohol. In the end of the food test, the oil dissolves in the alcohol and the alcohol can dissolve in water, all right? So I'm just pointing that out. If it was iodine, I2, give me a second. I2, it's strictly non-polar. There's nothing polar about it. So since as it is non-polar, it will only be soluble in the non-polar solvent, and it would be insoluble in the polar solvent like water. So I2, it would be insoluble in the polar solvent and soluble in the non-polar one. And the alcohol, it would be soluble in the two of them. All right. There was a past paper. Remember this, with, with this compound, that we did in the class on Friday, it would be the same thing like the alcohol. This is slightly negative. The carbon is slightly positive, right? So it can dissolve in the polar solvent because it has a polar group. But these groups are non-polar, all right? So for that reason, it can be soluble in both your non-polar solvent and your polar solvent, all right? But iodine, as I said, not just iodine. So for example, C2H, C2H6, this is strictly non-polar. There's no polar group in it. That means this again, it will only be soluble in the non-polar solvent. All right, so that's it. So once it has polar and non-polar groups, it's soluble in both. All right, so I'm going to have to end it here. Hopefully this helped you good enough. All right, so all the best. I will try to work a question and I will try to post a question on energetics in the community section around 11.30, all right? But for now, just focus. I think I have a better chance with module two and three. Those are more precise, so to speak. All right, so all the best, all right? So when I say I have a post or something, sir? Around, I have, around, around 11 30, I'm going to post an answer to a Barnabas question. Oh, you just, click on the, just click on the community tab in the channel. Oh, all right. Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Come on.